So if you wouldn't mind going on mute um, for the, uh, if I, if you get muted, that's me doing that because you may have forgotten to, to mute. Um, Jill's coming in, let her in, which is great. Um, so this is the bit where we get to meet Michael. Michael's here, which is great. Michael is a founder member of the Arts and Culture Network, um, details for which are on the website, artsandculturenetwork.com more of which later for first timers. Um, Michael is a digital marketing expert working for arts and culture organizations and is based in New Jersey in the States. And he's very kindly offered to do a TAD talk. The TAD talk for those um, not sure, it, we're, I'm sure we're gonna get sued by TED talks, but TAD is uh, an acronym for the arts debate and they're short, so they're TADDY. So there we go. So uh, Michael, do you want to, um, Come off mute and share your screen. Michael's going to be um, talking to us. I think we, we we got a really good title for this. Five marketing, digital marketing tips to coax people out of their house and into yours, whether that's a theatre or a gallery or a, a venue. So um, so Michael's going to do 10 minutes. I can't see your screen share yet, Michael. Is there a... There we go. Excellent. Let's get this fired up. Okay. We're good. We're good. Um, 10 minutes, uh, all yours. And I'm sure there'll be lots of questions afterwards, but we may have to do those in the okay. breakout rooms. All yours. Right. So, so the name of the company is Section11.art. As uh, Mark said, I focus on digital marketing for arts and cultural institutions. And today's question is, is five marketing tips to get your audience back or how to coax them out of their house and back into yours. So um theaters concerts and galleries and trendy whatever is basically are scrambling to get their audiences back uh, but i think the key to doing that is to put is to start by reminding them why they love art in the first place is to sort of you know get them over the the covid shock and and reconnect them with something they loved before all the craziness happened oh okay i'm sorry this is split screen i'm gonna be, okay Obviously, we want to get them back into the theaters by reminding them of things they love. Um, okay. So what I call my approach is basically hyper-targeted multi-channel marketing. And it's basically mostly, it's sort of a content play more than anything else. And there are, there are five key features to it. One is targeted social media. And by targeted social media, I mean not just any old social media for your organization or for things that are coming up or you know the usual stuff behind the scenes but actual social media that is that is specific to your to to, to your, your events and productions or whatever it is you got coming up so you want to think of your campaign as a series of mini campaigns as a series of niches so each each production they've got their own content they've got their own target audience they've got people who love whatever that is and you want to basically appeal to them whenever possible. You also also want to include a call to action. I'm actually surprised uh, at how many times uh, arts organizations forget to include a call to action to their to their social media. So you're just sort of throwing this stuff up and hoping for the best. The other thing that surprises me about art organizations is how little they make use of their own collections. They've got tons of content, you know, ready to go. And, uh, and they, they seem to be a little bit reluctant to put it out there, or they just don't see the value in, in using that as a tool for reconnecting with their audience. So as an example, this is a campaign we did for Casablanca. This was for a classic film festival. Um, yeah, for a classic film festival in January. Uh, and Casablanca is mostly known for quotes. Uh, it's the most quotable movie out there. Uh, so the entire campaign, I didn't really use a lot of visuals. What I mostly used were um, quotes from the movies, the most famous quotes from the movies, uh, as you see here, round up the usual suspect. Here's looking at you, kid. We'll always have Paris. And that really, really brought the crowd in. And then we supported this with email marketing to really sort of drive uh, ticket sales home, okay? Uh, that slide should not be there. Okay. No. 
We also supported our social media with targeted social media ads. And I really like Facebook ads and I really like Facebook boosted posts. The reason is they, um, they basically let you zero in on your demographic. Uh, and, and these ads are highly, are highly trackable. These ads are very economical. And these ads are highly, highly tar targeted. Um, I like to say, you know, especially if you're doing local advertising for the theater or the arts, you know, you, you don't necessarily need uh, to appeal to everybody. You don't need your ads appearing, say, in Nebraska, because, you know, the odds of people from Nebraska showing up at your theater, you know, are, are pretty slim. So you want to make sure your, your ad dollars are being well spent by, by targeting the people you're, you are reaching. Um, again, Facebook book ads and boosted posts are great because you do have a number of attributes you can use to target whoever it is you're looking for. Uh, we can go by location, marital status, interest, activities, what have you. Uh, but the key is uh, you can really hone in quickly and sort of deliver your message pretty much right into the hands of the people you're looking for. Now, Facebook also has this little thing called... Um, look-alike audiences and what it allows you to do is to upload your your um, email list to facebook facebook will then i mean it doesn't basically give you names or anything but it'll it'll uh, scan or you know analyze the people on your email list and then select people with similar profiles so that your ads go not only to to the people on your list but the people who who may not know you yet but who have similar interest you know demographics, whatever, as the people you're already dealing with. Okay. Third, I'd like to is is to drive ticket sales with email marketing. And by this I mean not just not just using email marketing for general promotion, not just using email marketing to sort of let people know you're around, but using email marketing specifically to drive ticket sales. You want to engage with past ticket buyers. Uh, you want to support the social media you already got out there. And again, we want to take advantage of those Facebook lookalike audiences uh, to, to really increase your reach. And whenever possible, you want to be growing your email list uh, at, every, at every possible opportunity. Your, your email list is probably the most valuable thing you have. Um, and it's also one of the few things you actually own. You know, you don't own your social media platforms. You, you, you kind of own your content. But the only two things you own on the web are your, your, your email list and your website. So you really want to be honing that list uh, as often and as, and as many times as you can. So an example of, of an email blast we sent out to promote North by Northwest for the same film festival. And again, the, the, this uh, email dealt only with this particular movie. I usually sent these out two days before the showing. So it sort of create a little bit of sense of urgency. By the time people have seen the email, they've seen almost a week's worth of content about what a great movie uh, North by Northwest is, reminding them of um, you know, key moments in the film, filling them in on little known facts. You know, for instance, Jimmy Stewart, was originally uh, wanted to be in this movie instead of Cary Grant. Apparently, uh, according to what I read, Cary Grant had no idea what this movie was about the entire time he was shooting it, which I guess led to, you know, it made a great performance because a lot of the, a lot of his performance revolves around the fact that he seems to be befuddled for most of the movie. And it turns out he actually was befuddled for most of the movie. So that sort of worked to his advantage. Next, we get to your website. I think uh, something else that is sort of overlooked in a certain way. You want to treat your website as a showcase. And in this case, and in this particular time where, again, we're, we're bringing people back, we're looking to sell tickets, you're using your website for more than just promoting your organization first. You want to use your website to promote your productions. So you want to update content so that your latest production is featured on the site. I would go so far as to give it its own section on the site, and that will also allow you to capture data on, on, on traffic to this particular, you know, check the interest on this particular production or event or whatever it is. 
And uh, the website, as an added bonus, allows you to collect email email addresses. So you're also you know strengthening that part of your marketing. And as always, you want to tweak and update your SEO so that um, you know people can find you. But again, you want to do the SEO and everything strategically to to for for this particular um, event. So it's like, it's like dealing, basically, as I said before, I'm dealing with this as though there are a series of mini campaigns, each one which is strategically targeted to attract to its particular target audience. There's an example of showcasing a, uh, an, an act. This is a singer. This is from the Soap Pack is the South Orange Performing Arts Center. This is a woman who appeared there several months ago. As you can see, she's featured on the homepage, nice nice big picture on the homepage, which links to a landing page, which is dedicated just to her. The landing page is over to the right. Um, we have information about her. We have uh, actually uh, a, a video sample, um, where to get tickets, those sort of things. It's, it's something that she can link to. So there's sort of a double SEO benefit because we're linking to her and she's linking to us. Uh, we supported this with actually print ads around town. That was fairly easy to do. And the video, uh, you know, a lot of these artists are people or people maybe the audience hadn't heard of. You know, you could be a, a loyal member of the of SOPAC, but here's an act you've never heard of. Well, the video gives you an opportunity to have sort of a, a taste. It's sort of a, 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 a sneak preview, if you will, of this artist, what they're like, and uh, again, sort of sort of driving you to, to buy the tickets. I wanna extend your reach. Um, a lot of the marketers I'm talking to are trying things they haven't tried before. They're looking to reach new audiences in addition to bringing back their old audiences. And they're trying things like new platforms. They're trying things like TikTok, you know, which, which generally brings in a younger audience. Uh, Snapchat, which has been around a while, but uh, you know, again, we're, we're looking for new places to go. It might be a good time to revisit Snapchat, Reddit, which can be controversial here and there, but, you know, again, there are new people and there's a lot of theater blogs out there, which you can basically either uh, guest blog uh, or, or basically invite them to promote your event for you. The, the next wrinkle on this is influencers, which are people who have huge followings and maybe connected to either the theater or or the or the uh, the gallery event you're putting on, they are somehow um, have some connection to to the, what you're doing. They have a number of followers. They're industry specific. The only danger with influencers is you really want to make sure they're not just uh, promoting yourself and and promoting your your event and leaving it at that. You want to make sure that the the influencers you pick are um, are productive, that they are actually going to lead to traffic and ticket sales, you know, and you're doing more than just basically stroking their egos by telling them how important they are and not getting a lot of return for the activity. And then finally, when all else fails, we can always do coupons. This is always sort of like my last resort, you know, you basically cut, cut prices for a short amount of time to get people into the building at least, and maybe generate some word of mouth. So um, that's, that's basic for now. That's my, is that my 10 minutes or? That's great, Michael. Thank you so much. I am conscious of time, um, but there's a ripple of applause going down there. Thank you for sharing your expertise. I'm sure you'd be happy to share that. Um, we, we're, we've recorded this, although I think Akin might have broken the recording halfway through by pressing. Yeah, I'm more button. than happy to. Yeah, that would be great. Um, pop that in the in the chat. Thank you very much. Um, sure, sure. I apologise, we don't have time for questions, yeah. but. Oh, okay. Um, well, if you do, there's my. You know, feel free yeah. to reach out to me anytime, right. day or night. Okay. Excellent. Sure. So um, I can't believe that's 45 minutes gone so quickly already. Um, hi, Nadia. Good to see you, Ralph. Hello, I'll give you an opportunity to mention your event in a moment, if that's OK, if we have time. Um, for those who don't need to rush off for a meeting at two o'clock, we have an after party and it's normally about 20 minutes. It's where most of the magic happens, actually, in, in there's a bit of an open networking like this with everybody off mute. It can get a bit loud. So by all means, linger after two, if you wish. We're going to do one more round of um, 
breakout rooms and then I'm going to ask Farah to to do her member showcase um, and then we'll get one more in hopefully before two o'clock and then we'll do the open networking so um, excellent so I'm going to do another um, do you prefer the pairs or the threes and fours what what threes, threes and, and fours, fours. Yeah, yeah. threes and fours would be good okay let's do another three and four let's create those uh, recreate let me see um four per room there we go we'll have break uh, there's a nobody will be left on their own then so i'm recreating those opening the room we'll do a quick five minutes um and then we'll come back for for farah so um buckle up and here we go again thanks <laughs>